Okay, hello, good morning. Thank you very much for attending this uh, this webinar. We are preparing to promote the first outcomes of our mega skills project. Uh, we will present you an overview of the project, but also will present you this uh, this outcomes about the initials of skill taxonomy we have prepared. Jaroslava will pre will do a presentation about it. And uh, okay, yeah, I think if you have any doubt, any comment, we'll have some uh, specific slots for the questions and answers. So don't be shy to questions on to ask any any doubt or suggestion you you can have. Thank you, Leire. Okay, that being said, um, Yaroslava, if you could, and, and tell us all about top skills for the 21st century that the project uh, uh, is working on. Thank okay. you. Okay, so I will share uh, my presentation uh, with you. I hope you can uh, see uh, the first slide. We can, we can. Perfect. So uh, I'm, uh, I'm Jaroslava Kubatova. I'm from uh, Palatsky University in Olomouc. Uh, it's in the Czech Republic, in case you don't know. And um, I'm going to uh, speak about uh, our uh, outputs uh, today. So uh, speaking about soft skills, what we uh, actually mean by uh, soft skills. Here uh, you can see uh, the current version of mega skills uh, definition uh, we have developed uh, within uh, the mega skills project. Uh, Soft skills uh, are uh, essential interpersonal abilities and character uh, traits that enable individuals to effectively navigate one uh, work environment and interact uh, with others. Uh, they are transferable across uh, roles and industries and uh, they are crucial uh, for uh, success uh, whatever uh, we mean uh, by by success uh, nowadays. Uh, what's new about soft skills uh, in uh, the 21st century? Uh, we all know that soft skills are a long-standing topic. So why to deal uh, with soft skills again and again? Uh, there are at least three very good reasons. Uh, the first one is that the COVID-19 pandemic has permanently changed uh, the way uh, we work. Uh, since the end of 2025, we can speak about uh, literally widespread availability of uh, artificial intelligence. Almost everyone is now able to uh, cooperate with artificial intelligence. And unfortunately, also uh, the European Union is under extraordinary uh, conditions uh, just now, as uh, we all know. So uh, these uh, reasons uh, are very important about uh, thinking and uh, rethinking uh, soft skills. Uh, so um, here uh, you can see uh, probably the most uh, important output so far. Uh, you can see a uh, comparison of the list of key soft skills uh, for the 21st century. Uh, you can see soft skills uh, that were listed within uh, mega skills uh, research, and uh, they are compared with uh, results from a review of academic sources, current academic sources, and also from a survey in uh, companies conducted uh, with uh, mega skills team uh, in about 100 companies in 10 countries. 
and you can see uh, the list of soft skills and those with a match uh, that are uh, on all three lists. Uh, they are highlighted in colors. So you can see that they are adaptability, communication, critical thinking, problem solving, and uh, teamwork or uh, collaboration. So those are really uh, the key soft skills. And uh, you uh, will see uh, a little bit uh, bigger uh, set uh, in a moment. Uh, what are we working on uh, now? Uh, we want to answer uh, the question uh, whether there are relationships between soft skills that would help in uh, determining an efficient order of soft skills training and development. So for this reason, uh, we have already proposed 30 definitions of particular soft skills. We have long academic definitions and also their uh, shorter, more practical uh, version that can be used uh, in, in the practice. And why are these definitions important? Uh, the reason is that they actually serve as a basis for both identifying the manifestations of specific soft skills and also for assessing the levels of uh, these manifestations. Uh, so to uh, finally uh, finish with model of uh, soft skills, uh, we have proposed uh, already uh, a categorization of soft skills. You can see the proposed categories uh, in the table. Um, they are interpersonal skills, intrapersonal skills, analytical and methodological skills, and attitudes and uh, mindsets. And in this table, you can actually see uh, the broader set of 30 soft skills uh, that are considered uh, very important uh, in uh, the 21st uh, century uh, as, uh, as an output of uh, mega skills uh, research uh, to date. Um, we are supposed to develop uh, a soft skills model. That's uh, something we are also working uh, just now. We have applied the Delphi method uh, to, uh, to start uh, with uh, this model. And so far, nine models were proposed by a group of experts. Um, there is very big discussion, many, many suggestions for creating a model. Also, uh, there is some skepticism about whether the complex relationships between soft skills can be captured in a model, but we will try to do so. And I believe that uh, you are interested in uh, so far uh, the best model uh, we have. So you can see it uh, here. Uh, this model was uh, proposed by one of our Delphi experts, by uh, Panagiotis uh, Campis. And uh, it was rated as uh, the best by the group uh, of uh, our Delphi experts. And uh, even though it's the best rated model, uh, it's considered uh, as a very basic model and uh, we uh, will uh, work uh, with it and uh, we will change it, develop it. Uh, we will see because uh, we have, of course, uh, many 
uh, plan within our uh, mega skills project. So uh, there are two very important activities planned uh, within the project. Uh, we have to uh, do two reviews and revisions of the output just presented. Uh, and among others, we uh, will organize a workshop with practitioners in late 2024, so uh, in about one year. And then for the final version, uh, we will also organize a workshop with experts from uh, the educational, political, and business fields. This workshop is uh, planned uh, for uh, the autumn of 2025. And if there are people interested in participating, they will be more than welcome uh, to take part. And uh, you can contact me or anyone from the Mega Skills team. You can see uh, my uh, email in the future. And that's actually uh, all from me so far. So thank you very much for your attention. Again, uh, you are invited to uh, join the discussion about soft skills uh, categorization uh, model and so on. Don't hesitate to contact me or anyone and uh, just uh, to be uh, totally correct. Here you can see the main sources I used for these presentations. Uh, those are actually the deliverables from uh, our uh, Mega Skills uh, project. They are not published yet, but uh, will be. So you can find more details uh, in in these uh, publications. So. Thank you uh, for your attention once more. And if you have any questions, I will try to answer as best as possible. Thank you. Thank you, Arislava. Thank you very much for that presentation. Um, once again, if anyone has any, any any questions, please put them in the in the chat and we'll get to them uh, in a little bit. Um, so to close uh, this the section let's say of the of the of the events i will give the floor to flavio Escribano. um, flavio, um Alfon please. alfonso just just i'd like to to ask something to you uh before making my presentation sure because um as far as already uh miss kuner is is all with us um maybe she can introduce about the importance of soft skills because depending what she is going to say okay um, maybe um, i had to, to to change my, my presentation so, so sorry about that sure but, uh, um so linda i don't know if you, you'll be able to speak now sure as, sure as you see fit really i can also please no, uh, uh, and, since and there will be uh, uh, okay experts. As as, as uh, uh, I think it, it would be useful then, as Flavio mentioned, if you could. Uh, yeah. Okay. Please go um, ahead. Let me just give uh, me a moment yeah. to share my presentation because we're talking about skills, and then um, I've been having issues with my computer. So in terms of no digital problem. literacy, today is not a good day. But let me <clears throat> let yeah. me quickly put that up. In the meantime, maybe I can introduce you. Uh, just uh, Linda Kudetova is associate. Uh, economic analyst at G Employment, uh, working on uh, analytical files related to employment in the twin transition, including on jobs, skills, gender labor market outcomes, and other inequalities. So like that, you're... So... Yeah, actually, if anyone would be able to advise me how I can do it on Zoom, because we have many platforms. Ah, uh, okay. No, uh, there should be a button. Ah, sure, sure screen. Okay, yeah. Just yes. Okay, great. Exactly. The center uh, of the screen.
Um, are you able to see the screen yes. in the full size or? Ah, uh, no, it's in the not full size, smaller okay. size. I think okay. you need to click that. Okay. Maybe try clicking F uh, five uh, key on your keyboard. How about now? You're not sharing anything now. At least that I can okay. see. All right. Apologies. I'm really terrible no with Zoom. Um, if you wish, I can. I can. I can share it also. Uh, too many platforms, don't worry. Too many <laughs> okay, then then maybe I is it okay if I quickly sure. send you the yes, slide? Yes, please. Uh, that's Thanks fine, that's fine. No problem. <laughs> I'm here to facilitate. Okay, it should be on the way now. Perfect. But essentially, I can I can give it a start without, and then as soon as they're ready. Um, so thanks a lot for uh, for having invited me. It's a pleasure to be here to to uh, hear all the re interesting research that has been done already so far and that will be done in the future on, on, on the issue of or on the topic of uh, soft skills and how basically innovative techniques can be used to to foster those in in um, in all persons in the EU. Um, this is uh, this is a topic that's becoming increasingly important or it's it's an ever important topic but especially in the context of the fact that uh, the digital economy uh, has been growing uh, at unprecedented uh, speed in the past few years, and uh, we're now seeing the digital economy being equivalent to almost 16% of the global G GDP. And at the same time, we have more and more workers uh, um, using digital technology in their workplace. And um, please put the next slide. Thank you. And at the same time, um, since the pandemic, we've been actually witnessing uh, a fall or an increase in labor and skill shortages um, with having, with having um, shortages across the entire economy, including occupations in STEM, uh, software engineering, but also in sectors that are actually key to the green transition, so transition towards climate neutrality, but also in some digital sectors as well as healthcare, which is also a sector which is quite uh, relevant to soft skills because soft skills and interpersonal skills are play a major role in that. And this is partly due to the demographic change, uh, but also due to the fact that we've been seeing that the share of adults uh, participating in training is actually uh, decreasing. So now we have only around 37 37% of adults participating in adult training and learning. So really fostering skills and, and uh, equipping uh, persons living in our society with skills so they can actually achieve better employment outcomes, given that we know that there are many existing inequalities in, in the labor market. So also ensuring fairness in that is, is of a major importance recently. And on soft skills, um, we have recently run a, a Eurobarometer, which is a survey that surveys or questions European citizens about uh, different different topics. And one of them was the role of skills um, that was carried out just before summer 2023. And it's been uh, one of the findings was that actually tra transversal skills or what what we here refer as to soft skills are the category of skills that are becoming more most important out of all the different groups within our economies. We, we've seen 48% uh, of businesses saying that skills are becoming more important and the overwhelming majority, 95% um, agreed that 
they are at least as important as before. But basically, we're not seeing any decreasing trend, but only increasing trend in, in the importance. And it makes sense in, this, in the sense that now we're um, becoming more of a service-based economy compared to compared to anything else. But we're also seeing that soft skills are actually uh, growing in importance uh, in, in occupations such as engineering or more technical professions. So really it's an of importance to, to look into different uh, scenarios or different innovative techniques and see how we can actually foster them better across the labor market. Because if we go to the next slide, um, another issue that we're trying to address or another um, another important element of the debate today is the fact that we're still living in a, in a, a society full of inequalities, seeing divides across um, different intersections, including um, digital divide, access to technology, but also um, gender divides, where we see that there are still um, lower ratios for, for instance, urban, urban areas when it comes to being equipped with digital skills, but also women being underrepresented in STEM professions or um, ICT professions, uh, where we even see a decreasing trend um, in the past years. We've, we've seen actually a growing gender, uh, gender employment gap in ICT occupations since 2011, contrary to what we would like to see. So having innovative or novel solutions to how we can actually bridge these gaps um, is one of the one of the great ways of how we can actually reach targets that I will introduce you in a second if we could go to the next slide and one of the last things that was uh, that was um, that I wanted to mention regarding soft skills and the role of soft skills in in the digital economy in the EU in the 21st century is the fact that we're also seeing that they're not relevant um, in the most obvious professions where there's a lot of interpersonal contact, but uh, they're also underpinning lots of uh, different competencies or abilities. What we've seen in, in uh, previous Horizon projects was that, for instance, transversal skills, including critical thinking, are actually the building blocks to digital literacy. So when it comes to digital literacy and being able to navigate the digital world um, for the youth, but also older people or workers, is really the sense of being able to have the core and the life, the core of the life or the transversal skills, and is not, not necessarily related as much to the exposure to digital technology. Um, Another interesting element is that, for instance, teamwork, when, it, when we're talking about interpersonal skills, is not the number one most sought skill, in, uh, according to Cedefop, in job advertisements. So we see, and, and we, we're seeing this trend also across all different occupations and, and sectors. And uh, another important role that soft skills are playing is also the, it's their relation to um, climate neutrality or the transition to uh, the green economy because, uh, for instance, when it comes to circularity and energy reduction and these uh, these areas of, of uh, an economy that we're trying to foster as we're trying to reduce emissions, we're looking more into now areas of competences in thinking holistically about value chains or supply chains or uh, durability of products which is all basically founded on, on uh, the competence of systems thinking or, uh, again, also critical thinking, which are, which are also some of the competences that are basically considered soft skills or transversal skills. So what I was trying to say is that <laughs> soft skills are really underpinning a lot of different um, areas of, of the economy of the 21st century that we're trying to foster uh, with the EU policies. And if we go to the next slide. Um, I wanted to say also a few words about the underpinning EU policy framework because for the context of the debate that we're having today or of the session that we will hear today, there are sort of two, um, two uh, let's say, two overarching priorities that the, the current commission is working under and that's, that's the um, Europe fit for the digital age because we're now talking about 
you know, exposure to digital technology, but also an economy that works for people. So there are two different frameworks or two different overarching um, policy agendas that are uh, taking forward actions that are trying to either um, push the EU's uh, sovereignty or uh, agenda when it comes to technology in the digital world, but also if we could go to the next slide and to create a sustainable vision for a digital society. But then there is also this underlying framework when it comes to creating an, uh, an economy that works for people. So we're trying to focus on fostering um, a better, um, better, but also more inclusive labor market, uh, knowing all the inequalities that are underlying and exist still in our society. So for that, we, we have the European Pillar of Social Rights, which is really sort of the foundation of all the actions that are taken forward um when it comes to social policy in the eu and there um this is basically a framework of 20 different principles that are underlying or driving any eu action on that uh in that field um, the three the three that are the most important ones to to what we're discussing today is inclusive access to skills and education. So this is the one number one priority that I would say this project is contributing to, but also active support to employment and also equal uh, opportunities and gender equality, as I also mentioned before. And if we go, could go to the next slide, please. I uh, also wanted to quickly mention the digital decade, given the relevance for the debate today. And that's, uh, I think I've seen a, a question in the chat that was um, asking about the STEM professions. So the digital decade is also a, a EU framework, basically the the and the policy agenda that is trying to navigate the the approach to digitization of the economy. And one of them, it's it's basically built on four uh, four building blocks, where it's trying to target sort of government actions, also businesses trying to support businesses in their transition towards di being digitized um and the infrastructure as such so looking at 5g coverage etc etc but also then at the, at, at the people and the workers so again the role of skills um one of the targets under the digital decade is to have 20 million uh, people employed as ict specialists and then have an increasing gender balance in the stem uh, professions and ict professions and when when we're talking about stem it's talking about um, about science uh, technical engineering and uh, i'm missing the m word but essentially these are sort of the the, the highly skilled professions that are concentrated in in, in science uh, professions and other related where uh, we see one of the largest gender gaps, and it's in in, in it's these uh, professions where also we're seeing also based on other research that actually soft skills again are underpinning any kind of um, progress or employment outcome of of workers because skills such as interper interpersonal working or collaborative uh, spirit within colleagues ability to be flexible uh, within for instance um phd careers or uh academic careers is showing or proving to be one of the one of the main drivers of success of, of candidates for instance in their phd degrees so again this is uh one of the one of the great uh great goals that projects like these can be contributing to that we have set out under the eu framework as as relevant and there will be more, but I want <laughs> I don't want to go on talking about EU policies when we have lots of interesting things to hear from the project. So with this, I leave the floor to to um, the mega skills colleagues. Thank Thanks you. a lot for the attention. <laughs> thank you, Linda. Thank you. I'm sorry for the mess with the presentation. No, no problem. No problem. Thank you very much. Um, okay. Um, so. This would uh, uh, close this part of of the of the webinar. Um, we, ha as summary, basically we heard about what 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 mega skills is, what we've done, and hopefully where we're going with an intervention. Thank you, Linda, for on the policy side. Uh, I know there are a few questions. I wasn't looking at the chat because I was sharing my screen. I don't know if we could perhaps address them. Let's see. Um, 
Yes, there will be a recording of the of the of the of the event. It will be on our website, which I shared earlier. Uh, I can I can share it again. Um, okay. Uh, well, I don't think there's any major. Uh, what's the stamp? Yeah, so that's that's clarified. Okay. Well, I don't see any major questions here. Um, if no one has any questions at this time, I would then move on to the next stage um, of this webinar and go into the roundtable discussion. And for that, I would perhaps give word to my colleague Tommaso, if you could. Of course. Uh, are we not missing a presentation? Are we missing? Sorry. Are we missing a presentation? Uh, are we missing a, a couple of presentations? Uh, ladies, uh, this is the first one to introduce the, the project as a whole. And then me speaking about the gaps on. I'm sorry. Skills. Yes, yes. Yeah. I jumped. I, I jumped over you. It, it's sorry. it's Monday. It's Monday. For sorry. Sure, don't worry about it. Yes, absolutely. Um, maybe Lede. I know you said a few words in the beginning, but I I think you have a presentation right to share. You you muted. You muted. You muted uh, yeah. Okay. Uh, can I cannot share the screen? I will. Uh, you Give can. You, you can yeah. now. Okay. Okay. Perfect. <laughs> Now I can do Thank it. you. Yes, let me. Yeah. We can see it. You just need to. Okay. Just perfect. Perfect. Okay. Okay. So, um, my name is Lady Bastida, and I am the project coordinator of, of Mega Scale. So, I am going to provide you a quick overview about the project. Uh, just for you to know which are the project objectives and the main impact of the project. Mm -hmm. But I think the main explanation about the work we have done has been done by Yaroslava, and then Flavia will, will also expose uh, another critical part of the project about the evaluation methodologies. So uh, Mega Skills um, is a project that was funded in Cluster 2 in Horizon Europe. Uh, it's a project of three years duration, and we started on February of this year. So as you can see here are all the partners that uh, belong to this uh, to this project. We are a total of six partners with uh, a seven partners in the, the University of Warwick as associated, uh, located in, in UK. So our main goals of the project are summarized here in these um, in these three um, cards. We can say first we want to yeah. bridge the gap between the educational and the labor market. We want to see which are the skills required in the current and future uh, labor positions, and then to try to include that information in the educational uh, level. The second is uh, the PST in careers. The what means STEAM has in already been put in the in the chat later. So we want to focus mainly in physical science, technology, engineering, and math. Okay. So um, and the third one is just to focus. Uh, as you know, the European Skill Agenda has twelve actions, and we want to focus on the on the eighth one, that is skills for life, because within the soft skills are uh, very relevant not not only for the labor force but also for our daily activities, in our da daily um, yes. we can say the daily activities we do uh, during the day outside also from the from the job yes. from our work. Yes. So, which is the main problem we have at this stage? Uh, there is a high atomization of soft skills definition. So there are relevant methods, re relevant models, uh, different definition of soft skills, but there is not a clear, we can say, meta definition or taxonomy about what soft skills are and how we can achieve and verify that we have those soft skills. And also, there is also a gap in training the soft skills and how we are evaluating that we have reached the a level of soft skills we want. So we want to focus on this on these two parts. First, a clear definition of a soft skill uh, methodology focus on uh, on the future, 
and also to try to provide a clear method, a methodology for evaluating, not only training, but also evaluating uh, the acquisition of, of soft skills. So um, we have six objectives in the project. And as you can see, this is already really what we have I already explained in the previous slides. The first one is just to design a, a soft skill model or taxonomy that uh, bridge the, um, the, the gap between the actual soft skills, the actual soft skill methods, and what is needed now and in the, in the future in the workforce. And we want to focus on different profiles and different sectors, but with a special um, focus on the technological, digital, and STEAM area. The second one is to uh, propose an innovative methodology for training and development, uh, development soft skills. The idea is just to um, review and unify the most promising methods we have now uh, for a scientific uh, overview and just to uh, empirically demonstrate that gains can be used as a valuable tool for a training and evaluation of soft skills. Uh, the third one is with all this methodology, we want to create uh, an intelligent software platform where we will include different machine learning algorithms to um, analyze the massive data we have about players. And with that, we want to assess and certify the soft skills acquisition of the different users. Once we have all of this, the methodology and the, and the platform, the idea is to demonstrate the model, the methodology and the platform in a different set of target groups and try to assess the usefulness. We are aiming to have 500 participants mainly students and teachers, but we are also going to involve at least 12 uh, SMEs from different sectors, as tourists, constructions, uh, transport, and health. But we also think it is very important to work with policymakers and to engage both uh, stakeholders and policymakers in order to support them in the decision making they have at the educational level, because policy making impacts on how the education uh, sector is evolving. So uh, in this in this area, we plan to develop two workshops with the stakeholders, just not only to present what we are developing in mega skills, but also to promote awareness and to collect their feedback about how we can support them to try to apply the mega skills outcomes. Uh, in their policy makings in the different countries. And finally, last and not least, it is very important the ethical compliance. We are following here um, an approach uh, with three uh, pillars. The first approach is ethics by design, where we are going to integrate ethics in the development of our, of our platform. Ethics in design, where so, because we will support the implementation of those different ethics approach in our um, in our platform and finally ethics for design we will focus on a standard that we will need to be uh, taken into account in our implementation also to support the, the ethics compliance we have um, prepared or we have composed an ethical advisory board composed by three different european relevant uh, persons that will um, provide us their overview about if we are compliant or not with the ethics part and how we should implement it in the project. And uh, finally, I would like to summarize the which is the impact we are expecting in, in the project. First is to provide this new soft skills taxonomy focused on the future of the labor force in, 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 in Europe, but also we can say in, in, the, in the world. Uh, we want to provide a platform to enable the assessment and certification of soft skills based on the use of video games. But also, this will have a, or will promote new business opportunity for the video games industry. Because if uh, the video games industry has more data about how the players are using the game or evolving their skills during the game, perhaps they can adapt how the game is, is exposed to the, to the players or to provide a specific adaptations to its uh, player. And finally, of course, we want to support the promotion of equal opportunities, 
the inclusion and the social mobility. Uh, and that should be all from my side. Just a quick introduction about the about the project because I think the key part here is uh, what Jaroslava has presented and what Flavia is going to present. That are the first steps we have done in the project. Thank you, Leda. Thank you very much. Um... I know it's a lot of information, everyone. Um, but if you have any questions, please don't 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 hesitate. Um, okay, I would then invite you, Flavio, um, to to share your presentation, which is uh, on the introduction of assessment methodologies. Their benefits. Sure. Sure. Let me let me please let me share my screen. Uh... Give me the ah, permissions, please. Yes. Sorry. You are enabled. Okay, thank you very much. Um, uh, here we are. Can you see my presentation right now? Uh, yes, we can. Yes, okay, thank you very much. So for, for me, it's a big pleasure to talk in this uh, context, this webinar about the skills identification path through the use of video games within the Mega Skills project. It's uh, Flavio Scribano, I am from the Econ Foundation, and we are the responsibles of this uh, part on psychology and how to use a certain standard methodology for um, access uh, soft skills through the use of commercial video games. We are talking always on commercial video games. Um, fortunately, we have already prestigious research teams such as the one coordinated by Dr. Daphne Babelier from the University of uh, Geneva in Switzerland, focused on uh, studies of neurocognitive development through the use of video games. This is uh, an, uh, a footage from her intervention in TEDx uh, in 2012. So, we are talking uh, about video games neurocognitive uh, effect uh, research, at least from more than 10 years ago to, to now. And I can tell you that there are several uh, studies as uh, mentioned here uh, about this topic uh, that is uh, more and more uh, frequent to, to be found, uh, fortunately. So, uh, these papers can already be, be found in those uh, of uh, publication with quartiles uh, one in areas such as education, psychology, medicine, etc. So, okay, we are focus, focused on this uh, topic, but I can tell you that there are several research teams uh, worldwide um, researching on how uh, video games are affecting or central brain structure, at least uh, from 10 years ago to now. So the mechanisms uh, used to establish a bridge between the development of skills and the use of video games are based on both a standard psychological tests for measuring set skills, as well as current strategies for uh, establishing relationships from current literature, that is, execution of prelim preliminary tests, we called pre-test, use and capture of information and data from video game playing, and finally, uh, the final test, so that we call the post-test. This uh, the same test we were using in the, the pre-test. All this information is massively processed by complex artificial uh, in uh, intelligent uh, algorithms to contrast the results, generate patterns, and make correlations between the detected changes. With this procedure, we can be able to find to find whether or not there are, have been improvements in the development of, of performance of uh, skills in the players. So, mega skill project is also necessary if we take into account the current gaps in current skills measurement methodologies. Most offer a perceptual measurement of skills level. That is, they are not measuring the level per se, but rather the subject perception of it. When measuring perception through question 
and not uh, performed through tests, there are several factors that must be taken into account, such as the hardware effect. So this can be a kind of uh, BS about the uh, real information, objective uh, real information about the development of a skill in, in, a, in a subject. The third one that is that most are all fashion and correspond to a population with a specific characteristic or cultures. So many do not take into account um, the possible theoretical evolution that the skills to be measured might have had in the last years and for a specific generation of people right now. They are carried out in a control or laboratory context where it is very unlikely that other variables with interfere. This adds internal validity or to its uh, measurements, but reduce ecological validity since not behavior or skills behaves in isolation in the real world. There, there are always interfer interference and uh, knowing how the subject interact with them could be for sure a, a relevant factor. And finally, they tend to be specific measurements in time in which other personal variable could uh, interfere. So on the other hand, taking into account that using video games can be very beneficial in training the soft skills because we find that, for example, video games allows us to use a steel assessment and uh, for that, uh, largely avoids the aforementioned biases for the uh, psych uh, psychological standard test. Also, the video games provide uh, ecological validity since a rich and complex context is uh, presented with which subject has to interact, not just an isolated uh, part of a test, etc. So this is a very um rich uh, world to uh, interact with the third is the measuring performance and behavior instead of perception because you are um, assessing a subject in the meantime he or she is interacting with the video game and final it is um, a measuring over time and not in a specific case or isolated um, the main, the main challenge now is try to validate the measurement through the video games. This offer simulation that is complex enough so that not only one soft skill is stimulated, but several, which scales with the complexity of the video game and element with which to interact in the digital world. Furthermore, the recurring game played over time allow us to observe the behavior of the scale as a whole all over time also its evolution whether it declines over time or not whether it stagnates after achieving a certain level without external help and other possibilities related uh, hypothesis has to be launched within the project uh, in order to also fill the gaps of using video games to measure the this this uh, skill so also using video games allows us to use more complex measurement, measurement tools commensurate uh, with the complexity of measure, uh, measuring soft skills. This can not be assessed in their entirety with archaic or simple tools, uh, simply because the sailing effect of, um, or because a small percentage of the skill would actually be measured. Additionally, the assessment cannot stop uh, their either only with data from video games, although distribution and performance scales could be created within each video game. So it is needed to try to match and compare the uh, measurements that exist today to provide some scientific rigor to the, um, the assessing through video games and with the letter uh, finish completing the first. This became identify which elements of or, or vector are present in the measurements commonly used by the scientific community until now in order to identify them within its video games. This implies a deep knowledge of a 
construct that has yet to be defined and agreed upon international scientific community at an uh, academic level starting simulating stimulating elements will at least be generating a theoretical basis to be able to um, establish relationship between the different measurement tools and video games it is, in this way uh, assessment of uh, game genders and skills to be measured are, are, are being generated within this project providing internal validity to the assessment model through through the video game so finally the benefit of using a methodology as mega skills will be the first one is a contrast method of training the most case of skills in the 21st century that is we're able to jump over the gaps that the test currently have the second one is taking advantage of the potential of video games to capture relevant information about the skills third is the player motivation so we have employees or, or uh, people who are um, in a job process uh, interview job process etc so we'll be motivated to uh, be evaluated or to train the soft skills needed for for the for the upskilling of reskilling the, the the following one is simplifying a streamlining and making measurement and training process cheaper for the companies and for the educational the, um, systems and giving greater profitability to the video games industry and establishing a methodology closer to learning by doing models for teachers also so that's all and thank you very much for for attending my, my presentation Thank you, Flavio, as always, very, very eloquent, very, very interesting. Thank you very much. Um, okay, now we've definitely reached the end of this block. Um, do we have any questions whatsoever for our speakers? Um, let me check the chats. I don't see any new ones. Um, for the presentations, we'll be posting them also on the on the website. Um, just in case you, you, you'd like to keep them. Um, and okay, well, if that's the case, let's then go, uh, to the next part, the roundtable discussion, how can gaming help upskill and reskill our labor force? And for that, Tommaso. Indeed. Please. Good morning, everyone. I am Tommaso Liberara, Innovation Manager at European Entrepreneurs, the CAPME. We are the largest confederation of voluntarily associated small and medium enterprises in Europe. And today I'll be moderating our roundtable discussion. And we will proceed as follows. I will briefly present uh, our speakers and then in turns, they will talk about themselves, give a short presentation about themselves indeed and the company. And then we will uh, move on to possible questions. So today uh, we have uh, <clears throat> Nuria Iso, CEO of Nautilus and co-founder of VR Magister. Uh, Eva Kaspar, CEO of Abbey Light Studios, and um, Konrad Alarczewski, Senior PR Manager at 11 Beat Studios. Welcome to the three of you. And uh, I would say we can start maybe with uh, Nuria. If you want, you can um, start talking a bit about yourself and your company. You're muted, I think. Okay. I think your audio might be a little bit low. I am having trouble hearing you. Is that also everybody else or just me? Yes, I think you're a bit far from, from the mic. Nude, if you could. Okay. No, no. Right now, yeah, yes. Right now, we can hear you more properly. properly. Okay. Um, hello, my name is Didak. Uh, she's Nuria. We are uh, part of Nautilus Company. Our company is specialized in virtual reality and provides you a solution to train your soft skills. Okay. Um, we would like to start with a concept that's educating no longer means transmitting and memorizing information. How can we do it? We would like to talk about the Super Mario effect, 
Mark Robert discovered uh, that when we don't get negative feedback or penalty for our failures, we keep trying until we are successful. Practice, 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 and more practice. Our system is based on learning through gamification and allows us to measure the results of each student. Our model uh, is based on virtual reality and adapts to the soft skills that are acquired through the gaming. Learning by doing is an active learning methodology that is based on the experience to assimilate concepts through actions. Likewise, it encourages the student to learn from mistakes and draw conclusions after analyzing the practice in a clear spirit of continuous improvement. Learning by doing, in fact, helps you to retain all the knowledge acquired much better. Our software is, is called Soft Skills. Uh, students can practice job interviews, pu public speaking, and the elevator pitch. Uh, always direct, uh, directed by the teacher from, a, from the tablet of control. Uh, once, once the practice is finished, we have access to the audio of it and the heat map of the gaze. Saving these exercises allows you to see the, the evolution of uh, each student uh, throughout the, the, the season or the course. Our job interview is also available in different languages. We can translate it easily in one or two days to any, to any language. The teacher can control the interview by selecting the order of the questions and they react to them, launching answers and reactions. In a different way, uh, we can say that the teacher can play the role of the interviewer, the avatar, which is the interviewer. Also, we have another um, software, it's called Content Creator. And you can design your own exercise, exercises based on real images. Uh, this is a no-code VR uh, creator. And also we have other two in launch phase. It's a PLC simulator for learning uh, the installation and repair of all types of mechatronic components, always uh, in a gamification style, you know. And uh, the virtual smart mobility is uh, for the assembly, maintenance, and repair of all type of, types of hybrid and electric vehicles, as well as charging stations and rescue systems. This is what we do. Hope you like it. And we believe that uh, in gamification learning systems, and we try to to develop products uh, in this, in this, uh, according this philosophy. Thank you. Thank you very much. Definitely an interesting approach and uh, definitely has uh, some real applications. So we will hopefully have uh, questions about that later on. I would now ask uh, Eva Gasparsi of Abilite Studios to take the floor and um, present uh, the company. Okay. Hi, thank you for inviting me. Um, <clears throat> Abilite Studios is a company, it's a publishing uh, arm of Abilite. And uh, we develop video games. We've been developing video games for over 30 years. Abilite was grounded in 2004. So next year is going to be our 20th anniversary. And um, we've done well, a lot of different video games. Uh, and I guess that I'm here because of our our development of educational or our try at doing educational back in 2011. Uh, and also 
the possibilities of adapting uh, the kind of games that we do now, which is city building, strategy, management, uh, into um, an evolution or uh, a learning of improving your soft skills into an organization because this type of genre allows to the player to structure uh, in a very deep way, um, even, well, in this case, it's a society, is like a, a, a military camp, the, uh, the last game that we've released, which is one military camp. Um, and it, it requires the, the player to be very organized and methodic and have to deal and manage economy, the structure, the well-being of each uh, um, character in the game. So, uh, well, this is what we do in a nutshell. And I hope that's enough for you to get an idea of what we do. We're a developer, video game developer, and a publisher. Wonderful. Thank you very much. Very clear overview. And now uh, to the next uh, presenter, uh, Konrad uh, Aramczewski. Sorry if I am mispronouncing the surname. Uh, Senior PR Manager at 11-Bit Studios. The floor is yours. Hello. Actually, you you got it very good. So I've, you know, met uh, many weird pronunciations of my surname. So that one was uh, was very good. Uh, so let me share my screen. And uh, we are also a company that is making uh, commercial products. So I'm more than happy that those can be used uh, as an educational tools. And uh, like, oh, sorry, I don't know how to. Yeah, so our company is 11 Bit Studios, and uh, also the name uh, for the first, the name can give you some kind of an ind indicator of what we do because in computing, the bits are counted in even numbers like eight bits or uh, four bits. Uh, and then we we managed to um, name our company 11 Bit Studios. That's kind of an indicator that we do some uh, unique things and uh, the company was established in 2010 by by the four industry veterans with years of experience and now we are closing to uh, 300 people also almost 300 people and our first games were from the anomaly series that uh, were used on the um, in the mega skills project that uh, were used those games in uh, soft skill learning and uh, but they those games weren't uh, popular and commercial successes and our first uh, really commercial success laid in the more grounded reality and the one that one game was this war of mine maybe you're aware of it it tells a, a tale of a civilians uh, during a wartime a civilian struggle during a wartime and our next game uh, that followed was Frostpunk, and that's also the one that is uh, most popular. So this War of Mine and Frostpunk are two most popular games uh, in our portfolio. So this War of Mine is uh, unique down to, earth, down to Earth perspective that was prized by critics back in 2014. Uh, and it pushed our company to the path of meaningful entertainment. We believe that games can be something more than entertainment and can tackle some uh, uncommon topics and can make people uh, think about their lives and, and some aspects of their lives. And uh, what's important that the game is in Poland used in schools, actually, it was added to the core curriculum of, of schools in Poland and it can be used uh, on lessons in schools. Uh, it's not about soft skill training, but it's more like uh, for the ethics or morality, talk about war uh, and stuff like that. Uh, so it also proves the point that the games can be something more than uh, than only entertainment. And the Frostpunk is also a game that I believe could fit into our needs of the Mega Skill Project because that's the game, uh, like Eva mentioned, that the city builder uh, genre is uh, especially um, good for that kind of a, a skill uh, learning because uh, there are a lot of planning, there are a lot of resource uh, management and time management in the game. Uh, and we also have a publishing division that was kicked off in 2014 and we uh, try to set for the games that are kind of uh, in line with our meaningful entertainment uh, philosophy. And uh, we have two titles. We have in general a free uh, in-house uh, dev teams that are producing the games uh, 
that we'll be publishing and one of them will be Frostpunk 2 and one of them, the second one maybe will be The Alters. Uh, and I believe also Frostpunk 2 could be a useful uh, asset uh, when training our soft skills uh, because it's also a kind of a management game, city city builder management game when you have uh, the scale is a lot more bigger than in the first one. Uh, so it's kind of a human manage all the city and you have to, uh, you know, uh, deal with different factions that have different interests and different uh want to achieve different goals uh, and in terms of the alters that could be also kind of interesting game uh, for the project we didn't uh, told much about it yet but the game uh, involves uh, a man has who is trapped in space on a distant planet and the only way for him to to leave the planet and to survive is to produce kind of a altered altered versions of himself and so the game involves a lot of uh, talking with your alters and kind of uh, trying to uh, to make them work together uh, despite they having different uh, characters and uh, different life uh, life paths. And uh, we also have uh, incoming projects for the publishing division, but uh, I don't know if they are uh, valued here. So uh, I think that's all for the for the talk about eleven bit studios. Thank you very much. Definitely interesting. I would say that all of our speakers uh, are showing us that indeed games can be much more than entertainment. The applications are almost uh, infinite, which I think is very promising for the future of mega skills. With that being said, I would uh, see if anybody has any questions, if anybody would like to break the ice or has a question about the project or uh, the companies and maybe the synergies between them. Any volunteers? Yes, Flavio, please. Thank you very much, Tommaso. Uh, what, what a pity. Unfortunately, I have motion sickness, so I can't play the invisible. So <laughs> sorry about that, Cora. But then I am a fan of uh, 11 bit studios, uh, video games, and also uh, Abilite games. So um, according to, to the final uh, goals of our project, and getting on the table the possibility of having a platform for for commercial games to train uh, soft skills i wanted to share um, a couple of questions for our uh, mbts uh, here and and i want to say also thank you very much for having your time with us today so first of all is how can you um, articulate a new business opportunity in this collateral markets we were talking about as human resources, training, management, uh, for even formal education, how to use a future platform for, for you video games to access this, uh, uh, this uh, soft skills. How do you see this uh, opportunity? Not, not only the benefits, but also the, 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 the gaps you can imagine. Uh, I could I could ask uh, I could answer sorry I don't think uh, for me personally uh, that kind of an educational aspect of games is a kind of a a, a thing that is uh, extra extra uh, purpose for the for those games because in terms of this world of mind that I was talking about we give the game to all the schools that want to use it for free uh, it's available on the government website uh, basically to download for free. Uh, so we don't see it as, a, as kind of a business opportunity. So I think in terms of soft skills training and, and the future use of educational, educational purposes of our games, I think that would also be the case to kind of a, uh, grant the game for use and, and like again, uh, some recognition throughout it. And not treat it as a business opportunity because, like I said, we are a commercial company that is making commercial games, and we, for now, hopefully, managing to uh, retain our business, uh, selling games to players, basically, so we don't have to uh, look for another sources of income. Anybody yes, else? No. Uh, sorry, anybody else would like to uh, add? Uh, maybe either Eva or Nuria.
If not, then we have another question from uh, Linda Kunartova. Please uh, ask away. Yes, thanks a lot. I was just wondering, I think it's a general question to all the panelists, so whether uh, out of the games that you have produced or out of your experience, are there any particular genres that are associated with particular types of soft skills or skills that you would see that, you know, there would be a stronger linkage? in terms of how they can evolve um, or help the players evolve skills? So, um, uh, okay, there is a, an example uh, that I know that it was um, a person that uh, did not have a job, but spent like, like nine to five uh, playing to World of Warcraft. Uh, which is a game that not many might consider uh, a, a game specifically for learning soft skills. But the point is that he applied to a job uh, and said in the in his CV that um, he was team lead that has been leading this group of people for, I don't know how long it was, like four years and all the successes that they have had uh, while playing World of Warcraft and, you know, um yeah playing and and being in relation and and leading this small team of people to meet their goals right um for me uh video games and games in general uh, what the real goal is is to entertain they have to be entertaining and you have to play you have to enjoy yourself that's the main goal and Besides that, or added to that, um, as Conrad has said, um, you can get other stuff. You can get like role playing, like you can um, interpret what you just leave or learn to leave through uh, things. Uh, I, I see it in my daughter when she goes and plays with her dolls. She represents what just happened and you see her point of view. And same thing goes for video games. I don't think there's, well, of course, um, I was going to say there are not a specific genre uh, for getting that uh, learning. I, I've been playing, for example, with my husband to um purchase with I don't know how the name of it internationally, but it's a very simple, very old game where you just have to reach with your um with your uh, figurines to the end, right? So it's nothing complicated, but still we played so intensely that we developed like psychology behind it, how to relate what was the game that you were playing, but also the psychological play that you were doing to the other person, uh, maybe. <laughs> um, so I think that even the most simple game can be extrapolated to any part of a social interaction or social skill. Um, Probably it's not necessarily to the person playing because the first goal has to be entertaining. And, and then if you want to extract something, that will be from probably the, the, the you know, the, uh, the people that think about this kind of stuff to figure out what application might have. Uh, obviously, there are more straightforward genres where you can draw that connection, uh, probably uh, visual novels where there's a lot of text and explanation and and simulation on on on, on everyday situations but i can draw extrapolation to skills uh, from almost any game actually any type of game um sorry if i may I have a few, actually, a few questions. <laughs> um, I also play games, so I'm I'm interested in this topic personally. Um, I'm not sure you will have an answer to these questions, but let's see. So, my first question: the other day, the group was talking about how, what is the gender partition in video games currently, um, and I think it's a very important issue because, as far in my generation when I was younger, it was mostly boys. Um, and apparently now it's 50-50. I don't know if 
is this what you see in your in your side of the block or the industry let's say do is is this your experience with your with your games or no do you see a partition of 50 50 male female playing games your game specifically um it's very hard to answer for me because um we get that kind of information very skewed from different mm -hmm. platforms, not necessarily from that game. If I would get that information from the game because of the GDPR and all mm -hmm. these kind of rules and laws that forbid us to get certain information, I'm not, um, we don't do collecting of data that is okay. personal. So it's personal. It's, okay. Okay. Yeah. So I, I, we gather that from our social networks, but that might be skewed. Might that might not be representative mm. of the people that actually play the game? Because one thing that happened is that there's people that talk, and there's just people that do. And of course. That, that's not necessarily the same. Uh, with that, uh, yeah. So it might we might get to wrong impressions. Um. But we tend to engage a, I would say, more often with male than female. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Okay. But no, it's interesting. It's they interesting. might be more outspoken. Okay. Uh, my second question is a bit more to the topic of the project, which would be, uh, if any of you have, are, are uh, as far as you're aware, um, do you know of any successful integration uh, uh, of soft skills training via games in training programs, official, let's say, state-wise or not. Do you, is this a thing that you've witnessed uh, or are we still in the in the very beginnings, I would say? I didn't, I didn't saw anything like that. But to add, to add one thing to the previous question, mm -hmm. uh, from my perspective, that could be some kind of indicator because I've attended recently two trade shows when we exhibited, one in Germany in uh, Gamescom in Köln, and the second one PAX in the US in Seattle. And from what I've seen at the at the booths, they are equally. Uh, the same amount of women and, and men interested in playing those games and testing them. So, and when you see the participants of the of the events, there are a lot of uh, women and girls. So I think it's it's getting more uh, gaming is getting more popular among among women because, like you said, in the previous years, in the in the early early years, that was most entertainment for boys. But for now, uh, I think it's Things maybe change. not fifty fifty, maybe not fifty fifty, but. Uh, I think close to this, somewhere close to, to 50, 50. In equilibrium somewhat. Okay. Thank you. That's, those are my questions. Uh, yes, Flavio, if you have a question. Yeah, I, I'd like to mention several things. Um, um, first of all, one is we have, uh, we have made a, a survey among university students, uh, 400 of them. And among a lot of answers from, from them, we realized uh, that they were completely, um, they were completely agree with the fact of giving information to the companies, to the job companies or job platforms from the game playing in order to improve their possibilities to be hired and that was amazing for us so they were uh, 90 percent of the students were answered the survey say that so they were completely for they were completely acceptable to share their information as gamers for uh, companies to be hired so this is something that they, that we had to be aware of uh on on how they consider their profiles as gamers or as, as something useful for their for their work life so i think this is important data and um, and if we uh, dive deeply into the sources of mega skills i can say that according to the several researches um, games are the tool, the most um, favorite tool for, for human species to, to, de to deal with 
um, new paradigms. So we are in a digital paradigm right now. We have to train uh, millions of uh, people within Europe for develop certain digital skills. And these digital skills are completely related with several soft skills as critical thinking, for example, team management and uh, um, uh, cognitive flexibility, adaptability, etc. Because in Europe, uh, we need uh, a reskilling and upskilling. And on the base, very basis of mega skill project is specifically to train or at least to realize how this amount, big amount of player are not right now developing these skills, but also helping them to build in a bridge to, uh, to, um, to bridge this gap on, on, on soft skills training that companies are seeking for uh, for their employees. So this is something we wanted to share to, to, to all of you in order to help the, the, the project, uh, to understand the, the, the project in a better way. So that's, that's why we think that maybe we can give a second life for very interesting products uh, as commercial video games are in other, um, in other, sectors but i also realized that we need someone maybe a third company maybe um, a new kind of, of of company to to um, dynamize dynamize this second life for this product on these other sectors i don't know how do you what do you think about this So how to deal with these challenges of um, moving forward the these very nice video games to other uh, sectors as education, as uh, human resources, etc. Um, I so I'm I'm gonna try to answer. Um... If it's not the, the the question, well, then try to redo. But I get the feeling that um, video games, it's an industry. So it has a very technical part on it. You know, you, you do once and you sell and it's a market, da, 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 da. And it's always intended to be sold. Uh, but it also has um, a very important part of it that it's art. And, and I don't think that artists are meant to... To, to 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 apply the expression to an end goal is specific. I think that comes to the thinkers I, will, I don't know the the how would we call the academy no the academia academia sorry. So that will I feel like that would come from the academia, psychologists, um, you know, to, to take those uh, different in instances of art or expression of art that definitely try to uh, to tell something about a specific part of the human interaction and then apply it to the best end that they are looking for. Meaning, if I would be... Um, uh, a psychologist that wants to showcase or explain the pain or the confusion of going through cancer or losing someone, maybe I would uh, search for that kind of experiences in video games and try to extrapolate, help, help extrapolate to a specific audience for a specific reason that I have. Like um, what game comes to mind is uh, that Dragon Cancer that is very specific. Of course, this is like very on the nose, but there are other instances where a video game can can help illustrate the, the feeling of this connection and the feeling of, of being lost. Maybe if you just, I don't know, my mind comes Zelda, that it's a fantastic game, but imagine that you don't know anything about Zelda. How would you feel in this fantastic world, but that completely disconnected for the story, the, the lore and everything, no? That's what I mean, that maybe 
it it hangs on 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 the academia and the the these are the part um of professionals to to take what is uh, what they want to uh, help improve into soft skills uh, using the the creations that are already available, which the you know it's really really wide. Um, video game, its end goal is to be entertaining, so it has to be a an experience, a good experience. So that should be there, and then how you apply to it, um, it comes from the human that is looking for another angle um that that just clicked also that the point that um the the obsessions the, the the bad side of video games right i don't think it's the bad side of video games i think it's the bad side of a uh, human mind where you when you do something for x amount of time without regulating you just click your obsession connections and then whatever you're doing in that extra amount that's going to make you uh, attach or um, or sick about that subject right so that's my that's my take on that that it's not necessarily oh I'm going to do a game well of course as an artist you might want to express certain things but it will come to the professional that wants to use it as a tool to really choose okay this is this is good to explain that right i don't know if that's exactly the point of a question but that's how i interpret it <laughs> and and then Anne sophie asked a question and i'm not sure if i got it like does companies know which is specific soft skills they are really need so the the question what would be that whether the companies we know what soft skills are being pursued to train like do we have like a is that the question i don't I think know it might be on the line of if there is awareness in uh, among the industries among the companies of which skills are in demand to be trained because for example as part of the project we have uh, asked uh plenty of people their opinion on that and so we actually have a an uh, empirically tested idea but obviously it would be interesting to hear from you guys so. from you um from the industry so what if you have a any perception if you think there's demand for some particular skills as opposed to others even though you obviously already have a specific you train with your program specific skills already but uh, yeah if anybody wants to contribute to that or if anybody from the project team wants to elaborate on the on our survey then please uh, just I'll, just just highlighting a question um, I, it it is more like a conversation that uh that that's that's the the way of our own travel indeed so the point is that what we realized when we started uh researching on on the relationship with uh, video games with neurocognitive development is that people are already training the skills when in the meantime they will well they are playing video games that is the important question that uh, despite the fact you are uh, being aware of you are developing software skill or not you are developing them so that's the nice thing we have on video games indeed until the um, the development of the industrial era people were learning through video games so no sorry so through games not video games through games so um in the meantime the the, the industrial era you know that and indeed, there is one of the topics on, on Frostpunk that uh, through the industrial era, games were banned from education, from formal education uh, specifically. So the point is, we are in a very digital era, and okay, this is uh, uh, maybe something that uh, it is, um, um, I don't know how to say in English, but okay, we are in a digital era, and then the games are in a very uh, privileged situation again. Why that happened? Why, why that's uh, with, with games again coming into the main stage of people, uh, not, not only in education, but indeed they are, uh, they are yet outside the education, the formal education, but people are, are playing and playing hours and hours a day a lot of hours a day 
and that's so completely new if we compare that with the previous era that is the industrial era so why that's happening and what we are hypothesizing is that we need video games right now because we need video games to train so certain skills to be completely ready and prepared for the challenges of this era and the uh, challenges to come for example the digital era and the and the green or uh, um, ecological um, challenges we have in front of us so going deeply and deeply on this idea we realize that that there are certain neurocognitive effects on uh, from video games so independently that you are doing your games only for um, for leisure and entertainment purposes that you have to 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 know that is your games are training certain skills independently you are uh, designing them for that or not they are doing that they are already doing that it is something like in our dna of human beings uh, doing things that we are barely uh, understand but they are helping people to know to be a better version of themselves according to the challenges of our era this is the history of human beings since the beginning specifically according to games so this project is to try to get all this data because it's the first time we can take a look into the data of the people playing games in order to know what they are doing or not so this is a very important question to have into mind also that this is the first time we can parameterize the things they're doing the interactions measure these interactions take all this data and talk about the people personality the people the skills developed within the games etc and etc this is the first time in human history and also there is another coincidence that is we have for the first time a very powerful tool to uh, understand in a better way all this amount of data from the video games that is artificial intelligence so this is the first time we can get all these terabytes produced by players to know not to know better not only a certain player but a whole community of players in order to know what's happening in millions of brains of people playing uh, video games so all these things are the cons the main concern from mega skills and this is why we think that the industry of video games has to be aware of in order to make a step forward in terms not only of business but also in psychology but also in terms of understand better your own community of gamers to offer not only to them but also to their brains new challenges new uh, ways of entertainment but also new ways for for software skill for sure i am completely with eva when she said okay we are an, an entertainment industry and that is the, the the goal that had to be for the video game industry you had to continue design for entertainment purposes you cannot corrupt the video games uh, motto uh, trying to to introduce some elements for training skills etc cetera, etc cetera. that's for us this is the to miss the the the, the path you had to 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 trust on your intuitions from your game designers to keep on uh, designing good games because we need good games to train soft skills we not we don't need educational games we need good games more complex games uh, more complex games with um, with uh, software to to gather better information from game from gamers and then connect it with game designers but we need these artists game designers to keep uh, connected with the complex information from video games gathered from video games to go forward to develop uh, better video games and to introduce new elements for interaction with game with gamers not just to train for just for for pleasure and i want to to share with you a very particular um 
very particular research on video games that is that for players to for first feel and sorry for for for, for this very long uh, intervention sorry for, about that but there is a lot of information i want to share with you for players for first person shooter players there is only one part of their brains that is growing when they are playing that is the hypoph uh, hypothesis only one part and maybe the front, frontal uh, cortex, the right way, or the right part of the frontal cortex. But people who is playing Super Mario, that is one of the most popular video games, they are training several parts of the brains. So it is like the brain saying to you as developer, what games are more uh, profitable in terms of brain development? So. For the average people, the average brains, they are asking for something to train more part of the brains. But for specific people who has a develop or, or, or their brains are asking for develop just certain part, they are people who play specific games like free person shooter, etc., and in a very intense way of playing. So different brains different uh, different uh, video games to play how to understand better these brains maybe through the use of video games how to train better these brains is using certain video games so in the future maybe we can talk someone you want to train these soft skills please just try to play these games if you are aware of the needs of soft skills within your 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 company maybe just playing certain skills you can mind this gap so but there are a lot of hypotheses there are a lot of ideas there are a lot of evolution to come thanks to the use of more complex video games thanks to the use of more complex technology to gather all this data and also to digest all this data in order to know how to use this data to help people not just to to train soft skills but also to know better the next games that will give pleasure to them because for brain is brains playing games is about pleasure all the time this pleasure of um solving challenges to solving problems in in a, in a more beautiful way for them this on the table, that's your turn now. Thank you, thank you for your patience. Thank you. Thank you very much, Flavia. I think it's super, super interesting what you said, because um, yeah, I, I completely agree. And I think that we might be able to get there if, uh, or only if video games uh, stop being stigmatized as a bad thing per se. And I guess these kind of projects help understand what video games are in a broader sense. And, but that's, you know, that's, that's the academia from that. I'm going to call these kind of things academia to, because it's really, um, it's really important that it is done, but I don't know if the subject of it has to be part of it because you know science normally it's it's something that it's you know it's not coming from me as a creator it comes from you that apply what you know you're you have the distance and you're able to really okay this is good for this or this is but I definitely think that is very important very interesting and it has to it has to stop the stigmatization and, and the connection, the direct connection of video game bad, video game is just uh, nonsense, video game is all these negative connotations, socially, politically, and uh, yeah, that's that's my two cents to that. Indeed, I think it's, uh, it's important, one of the main takeaways from our talk is that this is a collective effort and I think the basis is there. I mean, you already are in the industry already greatly contributing. And I think now, hopefully with mega skill support, we'll be able to like further showcase even more that video games are not 
just about having fun. It's about having fun, but they are so much more. And indeed, uh, ever the stigmatization is still great. But one of the many aims of also mega skills is actually to say break it down and exemplify that this is actually totally wrong. And that the skills that you can acquire, like playing, can be very useful in your life and especially over your job. And just a quick note, we have a conversation going on uh, par in parallel in the chat. So thank you very much, Eroslava, for <laughs> filling in the gaps. And indeed, uh, just to summarize, uh, we're missing a tool, an assessment tool. And indeed, uh, that's what I think this uh, fruitful collaboration between industry and academia will be able to provide ultimately, hopefully with the support of uh, the Mega Skills platform, to actually make available to everyone an effective tool that is going to allow us to actually measure, train, and just say disseminate the skills in the most effective way. Because so far, as we see, there is a lot of wasted potential when it comes to that, I feel to say. But again, I'm not the speaker here. So if anybody else has uh, any other questions or comment or doubts, please uh, feel free to, um, to intervene. Like, like to know the opinion of Conrad also about what I mentioned before, if possible. You mean about the assessment or? Yeah, what go further on the um, on the convention of video games as uh, not only as as, uh, as as this entertainment uh, artifact, but also to companies to be aware of the potential of of these video games and the data gathered from from video games for known uh, for knowing your community in a better way and also to to be aware of the importance of these artifacts as 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 part of the training of soft skill even when they are not aware of that yeah i think the players are kind of used to be maybe not assessed by the games but they can see the results of what they are achieving in the game and uh, when they're not seeing the game over screen too often they that means that they're doing they good but uh, i don't know if in in terms of 11 studios i don't think we we will be kind of incorporating those things into the games uh by the design it's more like it's coming out from the overall design of the game like you said for example in frostpunk uh it came out to be kind of a stick from the elements that uh, can be uh, used as a soft skill trainer. Uh, and uh, we mostly focus honestly on the narrative part of our games. So it's kind of a, the soft skill uh, value uh, comes um, like an additional thing uh, in the design. But like I said, I think the some of our upcoming games could be some parts of the, those can be used as uh, can be used for you uh, in your project. Okay, thanks. Thanks a lot. And what from Nautilus? They they want to to include any other comment or. I don't think we can hear you. Yes. Disconnected microphone. I think. Yes. Um, we are not specifically a video game company, but we use the video game philosophy to, to create um, learning tools. Sometimes we think that um, to enjoy while you learn is, um, is, is, is a better way to learn, no? of course. And the, I, I don't know how to say, but the, the video game uh, generation has another way to learn. And what we are trying to do is to adapt the contents, the, the, um, the learning uh, contents to this generation. When we talk, uh, when we talk with a teacher, we always uh, make them with the, with the teachers, we always make them the same question. What is the main problem when you get in the classroom? And 100% of teachers give us 
all the same answer is to pay me attention and to when when you uh, when when you have a, a classic a classical uh, classroom uh, or mm, teaching model uh, person speaking and the audience just listening it doesn't work anymore it didn't work 30 years ago and <laughs> it works less now because the people grew up gaming playing games playing video games and this this uh, is a this change something in them uh, we don't know exactly why but people learn now in a different way the young people uh, and 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 the adult people because we work for just for schools but also for companies and People need different ways to uh, learn same things. For example, now we are developing a system to to learn to to learn the um, theori theoretical um, driving license. You know the the classical or 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 sailing license because. This is boring to learn. And if you enjoy learning, you will want to learn and you will um, memorize better. This is, this is it. Yeah, in the, in the case of mega skills, we are more concerned about what the gamers are learning through the common game playing so not going into certain uh, video games for learning purposes but for them to share the data to other uh, to third companies in order to reach a goal according to job uh, positions or opportunities etc and and i i agree with uh, with eva in the point of uh, breed, uh, building a bridge between academia and industry, because for sure it's very hard for for, for companies to get the, to get some profitable opportunity from scientific knowledge to put into the market. So I think this is very hard to do, and this is why of the main reason you're you're here, how to find out the way to get this into the market in in a kind of second opportunity for your games because. I know, for example, ninety percent of the sales of a video game is in, is in the first week of the life of the of the product, more or less, according to several stats. Okay, maybe one month, for example. No, beyond that, the, there is a twenty percent, ten percent of the of the of the sales. But why if why if your game will be in a catalog for for companies to be used? In order to uh, to improve the skills of, of certain uh, of certain people, or oh, what if what if your your video game players wanted to share the data from your games to for a job interview, for example, or what if um, some parents wanted to know your games in terms of soft skill development for their kids? So this can open other uh, sources for, for, for money for your for your companies, for example. Or what if your video games were tagged not only because they have, I don't know, violence or, or bad words, etc., uh, but they can be tagged uh, about the software skills can be trained playing your game. So this can be a, a, also an important argument for you to sell your games. So this is something I, I want to discuss with ISFE indeed. So. Okay, <clears throat> to that regard, I have uh, I have issue in the sense that um, it is it is a way too big task for either a developer or a single publisher to communicate. And the market is not ready 
there is no one added value yet. Nobody will believe me if I tell, if you play my game, you will get all these extra, um, extra, right? Uh, there, I believe, or I think that this, ty this type of work has to come from the up, down, in the sense of it has to come either from ministries of education or from the EU, Department of Education, or a seal of um, a seal of value, and society has to adhere to that. They have they has to. So when I said the stigmati stigmatization has to end, that comes added to yeah, and uh, an extra value should be added. But I don't think that I can convince, and it would be a task that it would. It's impossible for me to get a return on investment on educating the society on just on that part. Um, uh, as I said, we did a, a video game where we added that extra layer of education because we got a grant from the Ministry of Culture. And at that time, we felt that if we did not add that extra layer, it would be very hard for us to get the 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 grant <clears throat> so we added that um it was called after zoom and it was a microscope that you had to look for microorganisms and then you had to feed them and that feeding happened through molecular um uh molecular setup so you would get to set up uh i don't know uh, sugar or water or whatever Right, and and you would have to add two, so H two, so two hydrogens and one oxygen. So that was our our take. But that the whole thing, it was fun, it was entertaining. We could have set it up with with colors or or forms or whatever, but we used chemistry to get that extra layer of of um uh, of education out of it. And and yeah, we're talking about a long long time. <laughs> well, not that long, but anyway, um, um, it, it was educational. Kids were looking for a uh, real chemistry formula, but the game was fun on its own without the educational part of it. So kids did not realize that there was that was that, that was in it, and and in my experience, currently. When you add that seal of enter uh, of entertainment, that's a step down on your marketability, not a step up. So it is a challenge, and I I don't believe that's something that we can do as individuals. Oh, oh, I mean, sure, everybody is powerful, and we I I've always added that 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 sense and that uh, see big picture. But I, it, I have to be viable in the market, in the current market, beyond uh, what is good for society. Because sure, I contribute and I believe that my company is my way to do that, but I cannot do it completely disconnected to, to the reality. And I know that if I, I portray my game on my, um, well, after, after Zoom at the time, there was two completely different, uh, separated conversations, one for institutions and parents and one for kids in the marketplace, you know? Yeah, because it's not, so this education <laughs> or explanation of what you can get from playing video games, it has to be coming from those people that has actually been demonizing video games for so long time. So media, and institutions and education have to realize that it is another ex, uh, it, the video games are another expression of human interaction and creation, and it is positive. And just what you make of it, how you use it, um, will make it good or bad. And of course, uh, as a human expression, there are human expressions that are not super positive uh, or positive at all. And there are expressions that are great, but that's art, that's human expression. It's not painted with a big brush. Thankfully, these days, we have a lot of different voices that are able to come to market. 
where 20 years ago it was very difficult if you did not have a publishing deal with a very set up company that it controlled the distribution chain. But now everybody can create and express themselves. Great, great intervention. Thank you. Thank you a lot. And, then, and I can see in a better way now that we had to talk on separate markets. So if we want to give a second life for product, for video game products in an educational way. Also, I, I don't want to use only the, this uh, educational word because we are talking on human resources, we are talking on training, not only educational. And I don't like to talk about serious game because for me, uh, but just one or two serious games are good. But uh, in terms of, um, we had talked in terms of, okay, separate market with separate layers of information and marketing, et cetera, et cetera. And that's, that's very hard. Yeah. yeah. Mm -hmm. Okay. Well, um, we've reached the end. There's only one last thing to do. Uh, Laire, uh, if you would close the session, as it were, with the last comments. Yeah, okay, of course. Thank you. So, okay, I think uh, we have a very good presentation by Jaroslav and Flavia about what we are expecting in, in mega skills. And also, thank you, Linda, for the presentation about the soft skills in Europe. I think you did a very, very good introduction and um, put in context what we are uh, trying to aim in here in, uh, in mega skills. Uh, and also thanks Tommaso for coordinating the uh, the round table. I think the comments from the different three participants were very interesting and also the uh, the different questions and answers we have after that. Uh, I think they were very, very interested. So I think we have a clear agreement that there is a gap in soft skills, how to do model them, how to evaluate them, how to uh, certify that the person has that level of soft skills. And we also agree that uh, video games, commercial video games can, can be a very useful tool because this is something we use uh, mainly in our day to day, we can say. This is something very simple to be used. Uh, there is a lot of data we can analyze and that way uh, we can also try to educate or train in a way is not seen as a formal training, we can say. So um, I, um, I think we have a lot to a lot of work to do yet in the project. In fact, we are still in in our first year. So I, I hope we can have very good outcomes. Uh, we will try to promote all our outcomes through the website that I think Alfonso already shared. And some of the information is already, we can say, confidential because we need to get the, the acceptance from the commission, but we will publish article posts um, and news with all the information we are discovering. So you can be aware about our advance. And of course, you have any, any comments, any, any issue, please let us know. We are also preparing um, a flyer and a, a stakeholders network. I don't know, Afonso Tomas, if you want to say some words about it. Yeah, I was thinking about that actually. Uh, Tomaso, you're more aware, you're more on top of this than I am. I don't know if you want to. Yes, absolutely. So soon specify. we will uh, <clears throat> may I say publishing on our website also the stakeholder, let's say, section of it. So also people that are not necessarily practitioners, but also companies or general public can interact with us and also uh, get to know the project and the topics we cover much better, but also have the possibility to, in the future, still in phase of development, to become also as a company and ambassador of the Megaskills project. So we can actually, as we were discussing before, try to maximize the impact of breaking this uh, very outdated stigmas and actually disseminate the positive uh, outcomes that can be brought about if one uses video games to train and evaluate uh, soft skills. So definitely keep, definitely keep an eye out for that. We will make sure to properly advertise once the that section of the website is online. And uh, yes, I think that is uh, all we have on that front for now, but stay tuned. I definitely we're going to have more news uh, in the months to come. And again, thank you uh, to all the speakers for 
the contribution and to everybody else who participated in the conversation. I think we can be very satisfied of the many inputs we received and uh, we definitely will treasure that and take it into consideration as the project uh, continues. And now, Afonso, back to yes. you. Yes, <laughs> thank you very much. And absolutely, and just to, to, to underline this, this aspect, I think it's very important is that we really want to um, have our stakeholders as close as possible and to interact with them as much as possible uh, because your feedback is crucial. So thank you very much. And uh, we hope to see you in another Megaskills event soonish. We'll see. We don't have anything in line right now. But uh, since we have so much to say, we hope to see you soon in the next one. Thank you very much, everyone. Thank you to all Thanks the speakers. Thank you very much. It was great. Thank you. Thank you. Have a nice Thank you very day. much. Bye -bye. Have a good day. Enjoy.